Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. We worship the name of the Lord. This first Sunday, December the 3rd, we give God the honor and the glory. I wonder if somebody can just worship the Lord with me and glorify him and just magnify him and just celebrate who he is. Oh, he is all sufficient, all loving, all knowing. Dear God, we thank you. This morning we come before you as your people, God, ready to enter into, oh God, your presence, your courts, ready to worship you. We have been given, oh God, this awesome privilege to adore you, to glorify you, to magnify you, to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. What a privilege it is to know you. What a privilege it is to serve you. What a privilege it is just to know you and to know that you are God and to know that you're all sufficient and to know that you're on our case and to know that you love us and to know you're with us day in, day night. And God, you are with us and you will not forsake us. We worship you right now this morning and we lift you up, God. We have nothing but praise, no complaints, God, but nothing but praises and thanksgiving. Glory and honor and adoration be to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Be glorified, God, this morning. Be glorified in this place. Let no flesh be glorified in your presence. We thank you in advance, oh God, for your presence. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you, God, in advance for destroying yokes. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ right now against sickness, disease, and infirmity, affliction, and death. We decree and declare any attack or sign against us. It is reversed and boomerangs back. Seven times greater to the one that sent it. We decree and declare right now. We bind, rebuke, and resist any astral projection any monitoring spirits or eavesdropping spirits. We take authority right now in advance over schemes, tricks, and works, incantations. We decree and declare you it are reversed and it boomerangs back seven times greater to the one that sent it, which it stated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We're releasing war angels all around us in this place. Thank you, God, in advance, oh God, for charging the atmosphere. Thank you for miracles, signs, wonders. Thank you, God, in advance for taking residence 
strength in this place. Thank you, God, for abiding in this place. Thank you, God, for living, moving, breathing. Bless all that have come in. Bless all, oh God, that come in. Thank you in advance, God. Everyone that comes in, we thank you for everyone being blessed, not leaving the same as when they came, but I thank you for fully charging us. Thank you in advance for the victory. Thank you in advance, oh God, for signs, wonders, following your word. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God the glory and honor this morning. Put your hands together and bless them. We invite you to stand to your feet as we honor the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, in the uh, in the Old Testament, there were no chairs, there were no seats, there was no furniture except for the table of showbread and, and the Holy of Holies. There was nothing, no furniture. They just stood to their feet and they worshiped the Lord and gave God the praise. So we invite everyone to stand if you're able to stand in honor and respect and adoration to the Lord. Psalms 100 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with, with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. <clears throat> Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. Say with me. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth for all generations.
Bishop J. Charles Cranking Jr. to come and take us further in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, somebody say thank the Lord for another chance to worship with the people of God. Come on, say it loud. Put your hands together and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Father, we yield this worship to you this month of December. Lord, another year. My God. <laughs> 2023 has gone by so fast. Lord God, and we're thanking you that we're busy in the kingdom, occupying space, occupying land, occupying the work of the ministry that you and you alone will be glorified. Even as, Lord God, we're going forth today and feeding over in Essex, oh Lord, a group of us are over there, Lord, now preparing, setting up. Lord God, get the glory as we carry the kingdom wherever we go. Now, Lord, as we're here to worship you in spirit and in truth, not just in person but online, Lord, be in the house magnify your name in all the earth and lord you arise and every enemy be scattered lord get the glory out of today save somebody today fill somebody with the precious holy ghost and let the glory of god be manifest in this place this is our prayer put those hands together and shout glory hallelujah hallelujah Man, y'all sound good. Hallelujah. Let's go to our morning word this morning. Want to read from our focus text that we sent out today. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to 47. As you know, we're in our time of 21 day consecration. And we are preparing for 2024. Somebody say 24. 2024. We're expecting God to do great things in and through Light Builders Church. Beloved, I tell you, I'm charged up because the Lord has promised some things and I'm ready for it to be. Acts 2, my God, verse 41 through 47, I'm going to read briskly from the New King James. And then those who gladly received this word 
were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. God have mercy. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Somebody say, Lord, use us today to worship you, to attract the unbeliever. And to strengthen the believer. Give God glory. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Beloved, I want to just tell you while you're standing before we read our declaration. It's good to see everybody today. We have souls being baptized today after worship. Amen to the glory of God. We're looking forward to just the great things God is doing. Adding to the church. Saving souls. Oh, God is so faithful. Listen, I didn't tell you all this. Real quick, I'm going to tell you the quick version while you're standing. My God, because of the resources that God gave us. A friend of mine said, man, I need you to announce that I'm giving out turkeys in the Washington, D.C. area. And man, and I need help to get the word out. We got the word out. And my God, in addition to who we were able to feed as life builders on Thanksgiving week, 150 plus families, the Lord bless us. Not bragging, I'm just talking about what God gives us. 150 plus families in Essex. Then we were able to feed additionally 10 families, my God, in Pikesville. But because we put that word out, somebody say God is good. Come on and say God is good. Not only did every partner of Light Builders get a turkey, amen, which we're already blessed, but we were able to feed 50 people more with turkeys because we were able to get that word out. And they went over and got 50 additional turkeys out to families during Thanksgiving. Salvation Army got 25 alone. Oh, man, y'all not praising God. Sometimes if you don't have it, God will make you able to be hooked up with somebody that does somebody say thank you lord for blessing light builders church with resources y'all need to praise god for that i thank god for that our prison ministry resources my god thank god for brother nori and all the others working thank god for the people we're getting to know isn't god good that even if we don't have it god gives us friends who do Y'all not talking to me. Look at your neighbor and say, God knows how to bless us. That even when it's not in your hand, it's in his hand. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you don't have it, God got it. And when God got it, you got it. Y'all not helping me. I said, when God got it, I got it. You got it. <laughs> we got it. So I just thank God we're continuing on. God is doing great things, making more ways for us, baptizing us in fulfillment. And it's now time for our declaration. Y'all ready? Man, I'm excited. I wish y'all would help me. My God, don't let me be excited by myself. I might break off running. Don't follow me with the camera. My God, I'll be back. <laughs> but God is so faithful. Can we do our declaration right now? We have our great chroniclers on the board. Amen. On the job. And we are praising God for just what God has given Life Builders Church. Y'all ready? Can y'all say it with me today? Life Builders Church is a church and ministry focused on the agenda of the kingdom of God. We are corporately called to be a people of prayer, kingdom action, kingdom building, and transformers of lives, and builders of people that know their purpose and take their place as productive citizens of the kingdom of God. Come on with me. We have God's mandate. We have all. Somebody say we have all. 
necessary components in place, inclusive of power, provision, personnel, and people. We are ready for the next part. Come on with me. We have men for the vision and people for the work. We have everything we need. Somebody help me say that again. We have everything we need. One more time. We have everything we need. We have all that God ordained for us to have. Possess and obtain for his purpose. We are a stable house with longevity. We are relevant. We are vibrant and fresh. We impact this generation and future generations for his glory now let's make this last declaration as we get ready to close out 2023 2023 is our year to retake mountains and territory lands and platforms with divine strategies and solutions as we build and expand for the kingdom and the glory of god somebody say it loud without fail we recover all say it again without fail we recover all one more time without fail we recover all give god praise hallelujah my god beloved before you sit down look at somebody and say god still works miracles my god i was able to be with apostle joshua giles and his kingdom government summit man what a powerful time but there was a lady there who could not hear somebody say god still works miracles during the worship the power of god was so strong she took them hearing aids out of her ear ran up to the front and said i can hear y'all didn't hear me y'all didn't hear me she said i can hear somebody repeat that to me god is still a miracle worker god is still a way maker god is still all powerful shout glory and praise god as pastor al comes oh hallelujah 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 how many know that god is awesome Amen. He's awesome. He's full of power, yes, wonderful sir. amazement. He's indescribable. There just aren't really enough words that we can really describe who he is, but he is all powerful, full of awe and amazement. Come on, can we lift up our hands right now and give God the glory? Come on, just worship him and glorify his name. Hallelujah. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God, He is awesome. Strength when I've been weakened. Forever He will reign.
Come on. He's great. He's great. He's great. He's great. Awesome. Oh, hallelujah. Awesome. Oh, he's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. Awesome. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Awesome. God. Somebody just lift your hands and say he's awesome. Come on, lift your hands and say, God, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Hallelujah. Young adults are released for worship at their place. 
Amen. I thank God for faithfulness. Amen. Minister. Amen. Sharice Hicks. Amen. Glory to God. She's a blessing. Faithful. Our youth minister. Director. Amen. And just all that work with her. They do a wonderful job with our children. Amen. And we're grateful. Amen. Look to somebody and say, I'm ready for the word. How about you? Father, anoint our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our lives to be blessed. Take me out of self. Use me for somebody else. This is my prayer, my declaration, my expectation of you. Get the glory. Get the honor. Get the praise. For it's in Jesus' name I declare and I pray. Amen. Amen. You got your Bible, whether by page, by tablet. I don't know how you may have it. Amen. It's not a sin to have your Bible on your phone. Amen. I find great joy in turning on the audio version and listening to scripture. Even when I go to sleep. Amen. Having the word play in my ear as I'm going to sleep. So I'm expecting. Amen. Everybody bring your Bibles. Have your Bibles. Let's take it out and let's declare together. Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy. A basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much more the bless because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. Lord, I declare your word is life to me and your word I hide in my heart so I won't sin against you. Give me present clarity, future illumination, and let your word feed me today. And I dedicate myself to hearing what you have to say. Now let's make this last declaration. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be hindered or distracted, but I will hear what the Lord has to say. And as a result, or what the Lord says to me. I'm going to leave this environment better than I came to it in Jesus' name. Y'all sound wonderful. Hallelujah. You may be seated today. Message number five, talking about sanity in an insane world. This is message five. And this is part two of the message we started on last week about the way we think. Amen. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Y'all say that as I think, I am. Isn't it awesome to recognize, Teresa, the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that empowers us to be able to live according to how we think? So as it is in the positive, unfortunately, I must warn you, it's that way in the negative. If you think jacked up and trashy, so will your life be. But Light Builders Church people don't think jacked up and trashy. We think on whatever is good, whatever is powerful, whatever is of good report. We think on things where there's virtue and where there's praise. We see our lives according to the word of God. I'm making a declaration over you. I know all of us ain't there yet, but we're on our way. Tell somebody I'm on my way. Come on now. We're thinking about our future. You're going to live in your future. And my man of God taught me I might as well live in the future that I plan. So I'm going to use my imagination to think about where I want to be this time next year. To think about goals and aspirations and how I can better please God. How that now I'm not world champion present no more Deacon Vince I'm now imparting it to somebody else my God and showing them how to be world champion I was world champion twice I think I got something to say come on give brother Vince a God bless you hallelujah so we got to begin to think about stuff like that you know that's why we impart into our young generation that's why we tell people so we can give them something better to think about One of the problems with our young men in our streets is they don't have nothing better to think about. I talked to young men, a man, and I talked to a young man once. He had never been, he was 32 years old. He had never been beyond the borders of his neighborhood. Never. Y'all think that's strange. It is not strange. He did not know. He heard of King's Dominion. 
but never been. He even heard of Drew Hill Park, but never been. He heard of the Baltimore Zoo, but never been. He's heard about Washington, but never been. I'm talking about places in close proximity. He's grown up in the bubble of his neighborhood, and all he's seen in order to impact his imagination is where he lives. So, beloved, that's why we need to expand how we think. Not look at people and be envious, but say, that can be me. Oh, come on, somebody. I can be a store owner. I can be a business owner. I can be the person that's sitting in the mayor's seat. Oh, come on now. Expand your mind. I can be somebody that God uses, but you first got to think about it. Somebody say, God gave me a mind. I need to use it. So in the sanity in the sanctuary, where we got to start this morning, we want to think about what God says. So let me give you the pattern on how we need to think so I can go along and, and plant this word in your heart. I'm going to move a little swift this morning. Got a lot to do today. Got to get them souls baptized. Got to be there. Amen. In a good time. But Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Ready, Chronicler? I want y'all to focus on the following words. Put in the work. Put in the work. Tell three people, you got to put in the work. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 from the Christian Standard Bible, it declares, verse 5, adopt the same attitude or mindset as that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Didn't brag about it, didn't boast about it, he just was about it. Y'all going to hear that in a minute. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death on a cross. For this reason, can I just put your finger there for a minute? Many of you think that Jesus was crucified in dignity. No. He was stripped naked on that cross. I know many pictures depict him with a loincloth. Uh, no. Romans didn't care about decency. They nailed him with used nails. Somebody else they killed with on the cross. They nailed in Jesus' hands and feet. See, you're going to die anyway. We don't care if there's leprosy on them nails. We don't care if there's infection. We don't care if it's leprous or any rust. We're going to use these nails because they work before they work again. They, they stripped him naked, paraded him through the streets. He had lost blood from being whipped, hair pulled out, crown of thorns put on his head. They didn't care. They were trying to make him carry his cross. And when he was weak in his body, because he was very much man as well as very much God, then they picked up a man and said, you carry his cross, amen, and help him. The man took the cross and helped Jesus get to the Calvary Hill, Golgotha, and there they crucified Jesus. But don't you think for one moment that the Romans were dignified about death? They crucified him. Part of it was to shame him. Part of it was to make fun of him. Not only did the scribes and their people spit in his face, pull out clumps of hair from his beard, smack him upside the head, and hit him with sticks. They did all they could to humiliate him. But somebody ought to lift your hand and say, he took it all for me. He took it all. <laughs> My God, some of y'all sitting there looking real solemn, but I rejoice because he took it all for me. He had me in mind when he took it. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. He humbled himself, verse 8, by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to the death on a cross. God have mercy. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of... So that at the name of... So that at the name of every knee will bow. God, I feel this. 
in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's a good place to shout hallelujah. I, I don't know if y'all feel that. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Now, now, when this text is read from the King James Version, we read the words in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Somebody say let. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The word let, that's the key word to our understanding today. The word let means allow, permit, see to it immediately. Don't stand in the way, but let it happen. Make it happen. Allow it to take place. It is speaking of a work process. It is speaking of something that you have to do. Can y'all see that today? Come on now. I know a lot of people don't like that word work. I'm on my weekend bishop. I remember one of my sons growing up. <laughs> and uh, they said, I'm enjoying my weekend. I'm not going to mention the name. They would put up their feet. They would sit in front of the TV. And we would have to remind them about the chores. They say, but I'm enjoying my weekend. I say, you will after you do your room, after you clean. Amen. After you do your chores. Oh, dad. Oh, yeah. Go get it. And they would come back after finish. I'd go check it out. It was done. Then I didn't bother the rest of the day because they were what? Enjoying their weekend. <laughs> but we work. Y'all got to get this, not twisted, but get understanding. What empowers you to enjoy something is work. Work, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the work. Don't just say, I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. Don't just say, I work in order to get money to pay bills. Say, I work so I can play. The harder you work, the better you can play. <laughs> and life is to be enjoyed, and life is to be a blessing. So I think that if you change your mind about work, then when it comes to the things of God, it won't seem like an intrusion. Man, I just said a mouthful. God gave Adam a job before God gave Adam a woman. God gave Adam dominion over his earth. And God said, it's up to you. Work. Till the ground. Take care of it. And God say, oh, he need help. He working. Can I give y'all this revelation? God knows everything you need. But some things you need are released when you work. Amen. Somebody say, put in the work. Put in the work. Now, now, the Bible says, the Bible says to let or intentionally allow. And it means that effort or work is being put in in order to accomplish something or complete a task. When you are letting the mindset of Jesus be in you, let's get to the message. It definitely involves work. When you are saved, your mind is still needing to be renewed. God have mercy. When you give your life to Jesus, your mouth is still needing to be taught how to talk. When you give your life to Jesus, your thoughts are being changed into the pattern of God. It don't happen overnight. Somebody say you got to put in the work. Somebody say it happens over time. It happens over time. Don't be thrown off by process. Somebody say I am a work in process. And I am progressing in process. You ought to praise God right there because if you was dead, you couldn't do the work. Amen. Hallelujah. So what are we here for today? In order to keep sanity in an insane world, you got to work on your head and your heart. I know y'all quiet because I'm about to just give it to you. You got to work on your head. You got to work on your heart. I want to challenge you because this is the way it is. The way you thought this time last year, you can't think that way no more. You got to upgrade. 
you got to upgrade how you think because only from the way you think will be the upgrade of the way you speak. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, right? But also your words are thoughts verbalized. Your words are thoughts verbalized. You say what you think. Now, that's why we got to watch our words. This season, Mom Cherry, we got to watch what we say more than we ever have. Because the enemy is trying to keep us from fulfilling destiny. And whether you realize it or not, you empower hindrances and blockages by what you say out of your mouth because of how you think. Some of us invite extra demonic trouble, Ronnie, because we ain't thinking right and we ain't talking right. Why invite the devil to buffet you more when he's already here to oppose you? Why give him license to oppose you more? The Bible said, lest the devil have advantage over me, I'm not ignorant of his devices. So one of the things I got to do is work on my head. Got to work on my head. Oh, y'all going to hear this today. I'm almost done, believe it or not. But we got to work on our head. Somebody say, Lord, help me think right. Oh, my God, help me. Help me, Lord. My God, beloved. You know, God is not so concerned about what you think. <laughs> hear what I'm about to say. Don't take this as license. If the thought ain't good, then you do something about it to get rid of it. Thoughts are always going to come, but you got to say, no, nah, that ain't the way I'm going to think. You got to, the Bible says, cast down imaginations. The woman walking down the street, yeah, she look good. But beloved, long looks cause you to longly lust. Lord, help me. Y'all quiet today. All the men in here should be saying, speak, Lord, speak, Lord. You're looking at that woman walk down the street, and sisters, y'all look at brothers too. Come on, don't be giving me that. Y'all see that man walking around there, and my God, y'all, man, look at that hunk. And then long looking turns into lusting. You're human. You're supposed to desire sex. Did I say that in Pikesville? But if you allow that thought to get inordinate, then it's going to turn into lust, and you lust and committed the act already when you think it in your head. God is not upset because the thought comes. God says you get in trouble because you meditate on the thought. Come on. Let me get off women and men. Let me get on robbing the bank. Can I be honest with you? I was having financial trouble. Somebody say a long time ago. Right in Randallstown, there was this little bank in the early 80s. After Pastor Al and I got married, I got laid off for work for 18 months. And beloved, I remember just as sure as I'm born. I remember being in this street, and there was a little bank in Randallstown. And God have mercy, a bunch of old ladies was working in the bank. And it thought came to my mind, how can I hit this bank and get away with it? I ain't lying to y'all. I was struggling, and I thought them old ladies can't run like I can. They can't get, you see, y'all looking at me judging me, right? Don't tell me you never had a crazy thought. Bunch of old ladies with canes and old ladies, my God, with reading glasses on, thick as a Coca-Cola bottle, not making fun. I'm just giving you an explanation. And I actually, your pastor, I wasn't a bishop at the time, wasn't even a pastor at the time. And if I was, it was still a thought that I had to cast down because I was in trouble. Don't look at me like that. Some of y'all have been in trouble and thought some stuff. So I was in deep trouble, and I said, if I hit this bank, I can run out the door and get away. I ain't going to be greedy. I'm just going to tell them, give me what's in the drawer. Let's get out of here. Amen. And then the Holy Ghost said, are you stupid? <laughs> the Holy Ghost said, are you stupid? I said, what you mean? He said, them old ladies going to have a 45, a shotgun, a, a buck gun, and they cannot miss. Some of them old ladies could shoot. Oh, y'all not helping me. Because at the time, Randallstown, my God, was predominantly another color. 
And I don't know who came down from wherever. I don't know what ladies were having target practice in the bank or outside. I don't know who them cameras, I didn't see many cameras. They didn't have a lot of tape to tell my height and the thought ran and I said, Lord, I gotta cast this down. I ain't robbing no bank. I'm not gonna do this and put myself in harm's way because beloved, I am a man of God and the Lord said, thou shalt not steal. So how would y'all think Charlie Carrington in jail because he robbed the bank full of old ladies? When you're in trouble, that's the main time. The enemy will be throwing thoughts at you. Can I get a witness? When you're up against the wall, the enemy be making you think all kinds of stuff. When you and your wife argue one time too many, then that little secretary, sexy thing, my God, PYT on your job, start looking at you little cross-eyed and you look back at her cross-eyed. God, all you're looking for is an excuse. I had a guy tell me one time, I'm not going to go looking for it, but if it come to me, I ain't going to turn it down. I said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> you just gave the devil power to give you what you're asking for. Tell somebody you'll have what you say. Y'all not helping me this morning. But that's how powerful your thoughts are. You ever tried it? If you just sit there for about 10 minutes saying over and over, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm tired, I'm tired. You wake up in the morning, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. My God, before 2 o'clock, you're going to be asleep. <laughs> because as a man thinketh, so you ought to be saying, I'm going to Hawaii, I'm going to Hawaii, I'm going to Hawaii, I'm going to, I'm going to vacation, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Hawaii. You ought to be saying something powerful out of your mind. My God, and stop negative confession. God, think right. Somebody say, get your head together. My God, Jesus did the work in order to what? Save us from sin. Can I get a witness? He did the work in order to redeem our lives from destruction. Somebody say, hallelujah. He did the work to reconnect the broken relationship between the Father and mankind because of sin. That's a good place to praise God. Oh, it ain't no praise. Come on, no patty cake now. Praise him. Jesus did the work. He did the work. All right? His life, his death, his burial and resurrection accomplished this. Somebody remember this word I used a few months ago, tetelestai. Y'all remember tetelestai? What does tetelestai mean? It means it is finished. There is no need for another sacrifice. There is no need for another Jesus. There is no need to burn on anything on the altar. There is no need to do anything more. Jesus did it all. Y'all gonna praise God with me because Jesus did it all. He paid the price. He gave his life. He sacrificed for me. I'm here today because of Jesus. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody right there watching me online right in the chat he did it all somebody here today shout with me he did it all I can't pay the price he already paid it I can't do good enough he already did it he did everything I don't mean I'm off the hook. I got to take it personally. Somebody say, I take what he did personally. I take it from me. He died on the cross. I take it personally. He took a whipping. I take it personally. He bled for me. I take it personally. He didn't just die for the world. He died for me. Oh, tell us, die. It is complete. It is finished. All he asked me to do is present my body a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto him, which is the least that I can do. And not be conformed to this worldly way, but transformed by the what? Renewing of my mind. Why? I got to work on my head. So that I can prove that which is good, perfect, 
and acceptable to God. Somebody praise God. Y'all feel the Holy Ghost in here like I do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to willingly submit our unregenerate hearts and carnal minds through the process. Daily, the Holy Ghost helps us work on our head and work on our hearts. Somebody pray that Holy Ghost. I'm going to say it like you mean the Holy Ghost. Daily, work on me. I submit to you my head and my heart. I give you my head and my heart. Lift your hands and say, take it, Lord. I give it to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my God, every day. Because if it ain't thought, if it's not thought, it won't be said. Words are thoughts personified. So, Lord, clean my head. Clean my heart. Because I'm on my way to blessing. I don't want to talk myself out of God's blessing for me. No, no, no. I, I don't want to. I, how many of you have been through long tests at times and, and rough times? I'm not talking about everybody struggling. But it could be a test of sickness in your body. It could be a test of a child acting crazy. How many have ever been through something and you've been through it long enough to say, Lord, once you bring me out, I don't want to come back this way no more. What's going to help you stay out is your head and your heart. I want to get to the place, Evan, that nobody can affect my head and my heart. I am in charge. See, this is the entity you got to realize. You are in charge of your head and your heart. I know Flip Wilson said the devil made me do it, but Flip, you was wrong. Some people say, Satan, get behind me and don't push. That's what some people have said. But, beloved, he can't push you into anything you don't want to do. Can I break the word down? In James, I don't have time to go to it. I got to close. But in James, it says, a man is tempted when he of his own lust. Think too hard on that thing. So it's possible that I can be unyielding to temptation if I let the Holy Ghost work on my head and my heart. I ain't got to do everything the devil suggests. I ain't got to, excuse my English, please. I don't have to say everything the devil tell me to say. I don't have to say everything that come in my mind. It may be right to say, but sometimes it ain't the right time to say. Jesus says something like this, do not cast your pearls before swine. That don't mean you call somebody a pig. It just means don't take what is valuable and throw it in the path of something invaluable. You know what you're about to say going to cause an argument, so what you going to do? <laughs> Y'all good this morning. You know what you say going to cause some hard feelings, so what you do? You know what you say may need to be said, but you need to seek who for timing. Would you rather fight or be hurt? Every day, husbands and wives, y'all got to get this. Especially some of us husbands. I'm realizing. I told y'all how sometimes when my wife is not as swift as I like her to be, I've learned that sometimes that's the Holy Ghost saving me from something. That ain't giving the wives carte blanche to hold us up. Though. But there are times when you need to pray, Lord, let me hear you. Let me come. The Lord told me this morning, go a different way to church. I have no idea why. But I bet he'll let me know later. That could have been an accident somewhere. I could have slipped and not made it today. I don't know. It's, it's slippery out there. See, we got to learn to give the Lord our mind so he can come in and out when he needs to. Oh, come on now. Somebody say, work on my head, Lord. So let me go to the close. Y'all okay? Y'all getting some out of this? We have to willingly submit our unregenerate hearts. See, your heart 
is still being saved. You gave Jesus your heart. He's still working on it. Somebody ought to shout, keep working, Lord. <laughs> you gave Jesus your mind. Somebody ought to say, keep working, Lord. I am a work in process. I am becoming mature. I'm living from glory to glory, from faith to faith. He is showing me what I need to know. How many are determined this time next week not to be like you are this week, but to be better? Lord, I'm down the weeks now. I want to be better. I'm trying to get the days. I want to be better tomorrow than I am today. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. So, Lord, keep working on my mind and work on my heart. Because here's what the text says as we close. The mind and the heart of Christ. Jesus, number one, knew who he was. Tell somebody, no more identity crisis. Know who you are. Come on, let's testify for about 30 seconds. Tell somebody you're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a child of God. You're made fearfully and wonderfully. Come on, talk Bible to them. You're made in the image and likeness of God. You got the imprint of God stamped in your soul. Heaven belongs to you. Heart of God is your heart. Come on, talk to somebody. I know some of y'all think it's crazy, but sometimes me and my wife, she doing it on her own, I do it on my own, and sometimes we do it together. I saw that. <laughs> sometimes we look in the mirror and say, I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. I'm blessed. I'm a wealthy man. I'm a rich man for the kingdom. I'm a resource millionaire, an access millionaire. I'm a liquid millionaire. I am an asset millionaire. I have what I need for the kingdom of God. I don't have to go searching for it. Lord, when I need it, you give it to me because I'm on my way to fulfilling destiny and everything I need for destiny is on the road ahead of me. You ought to be talking right now while I'm talking. Lord, I don't have to beg, borrow, steal. Lord, you got what I need. Lord, you are what I need. You have the power over my life. No good thing you withhold. Y'all better help me. No good thing you withhold from those that walk up right before you. I'm royal priesthood. I'm a child of God. I'll tell y'all a little secret. I love my dad. I love my dad. God knows, but when he died, when he went to be with the Lord, my God, he has a better life, so I have to let go to let him have a better life so I can have a better life. And at the moment my father passed, I was crying. My pastor had called me, Bishop Hilliard, called me, said, I heard what happened to Pop. I want you to know I'm with you. I bust out crying. He said, I'm here for you, man. And I begin to look in that mirror, and I begin to declare, Lord, you are my father. You've always been my father. You're my father's father. Every Father's Day, I denied the depression. Yeah, I'm going to miss him, but I will not get depressed because I have a father. Lord God, I remember the good things about my dad, and I thank you for my dad who raised me to be a man. But Lord, I'm not going to miss him like that because, Lord, he did his job. He's gone to his reward. Lord, I thank you that you're my father. Anybody want to add to it? You're my lawyer in the courtroom, my doctor in the sick room. I can't get all upset. You're my mind regulator, my heart fixer. You're the God of my salvation. Somebody ought to call out and say, you're the lover of my soul. The peace that, oh, that passes all understanding. Yeah, I grieved uh, my God. And somebody said, how did you preach his funeral? How did you even preach the morning he died? I said, because the Lord is my light and my salvation. In whom shall I fear? Y'all remember the morning he died, May 26. My God, 2019. I, I still stood and preached, not because I'm strong, but because the Lord is strong. I, the Lord is the joy of my life. My face is the last face that saw them when they closed the casket. And memories just went through my head. But I said, I have a father. I got a daddy. And Lord, you are my God. Sometimes you go through hell, you got to talk to stuff. Somebody shout, he's my father. He's my bridge over troubled water. He's the Lord of my life. He's a soother of my soul. The strength of my very life. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord, uh, that you never leave me nor forsake me. You always with me. Somebody feel Jesus in here. Shout glory. I'm going to say something. Y'all don't think I'm cold, please. 
I got too much to do to be depressed. Some of y'all shake your head, but I need some amen somewhere. I got too much to do to be off my game. I'm living in crucial times. I got to hear from God. I got to be able to know how to navigate my times. Now I want to tell y'all something. One of the things I heard this weekend at the government summit, I, I wanted to bring it back. I'm going to talk to the leaders first about all of it. But one thing I heard I want to share with you now. Some things are going to happen because the Bible says they will. Wars and rumors of wars. But when the Bible said rumors of wars, I got a revelation while I was gone. Rumors can be counseled. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't hear me. If the saints would pray and we would come together, that's why the first day of our consecration, we focus on unity. Psalm 133, right? If we would come together as a body of Christ and get unified, I'm going to tell you, there are some things that will change. (laughs) Who did God leave control of the earth to? Us. Who was the man that God gave it to? Adam, the first Adam. He messed up, right? So what did God send? A second Adam. His name happened to be Jesus. If he abides in you and his word abides in you and you abide in him, what does the Bible say? You can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. There will be some things that happen, but a unified church can say, Lord, further decrease the murder rate in Baltimore. Lord, Let these sex traffickers be caught and put out of business. Come on, can you imagine if every church in Baltimore, at least a majority of them, start praying, Lord, let us no longer be the heroin capital of the world. Lord, let fentanyl not continue to cut people's lives short. Can you imagine if we just start as life builders? Lord, let us all have provision. Lord, let no sickness or disease come on our body. Can I tell y'all why we haven't done a funeral of a partner of this church in years? Because somebody's praying. Keep back the hand of death. Keep back the hand of the enemy. That's why we're not doing funerals every week because there's a covering over this house called prayer. Oh, y'all got to hear me. Oh, somebody not hear me. It's not because we're young and actuarially we ain't ready to die. Young folk dying in record time. My God, folk getting cancer, 32 year old getting colon cancer, prostate cancer. God have mercy. What in the world? Since COVID ended, it seems like cancer is almost trying to be a new epidemic. But I declare over you, I declare over this house, it shall not come nigh your dwelling. Only with my eyes shall I behold the reward of the enemy. I'm going to live so God can get the glory. I need about 20 people to shout glory. Hallelujah. I need somebody to write it in the chat. I will live and not die. Oh my God. Whether y'all want to hear it or not, there's a grace on this house because of how we think. There's a culture in this house that we are kingdom. Y'all wonder why I preach like I do. Wonder why I have the standard I do. Because I want to maintain the culture. I want to maintain the culture. I want God to be glorified in this house. I don't want religion. I want relationship. I want the power of God in this place. Somebody that wanted to say, I want it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me close. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm off the time. Jesus not only knew who he was, he humbled himself. And became a servant. You with me, Chronicle? My God, good job there. My God, Jesus died not only in the flesh. He died to the flesh. Jesus became obedient. I'm talking about the mind we should have. Somebody begin to say, if Jesus can have this mind, so can I. (laughs) Y'all ain't saying it because y'all like, it's going to take work. I told you it will. 
What mind? Jesus knew he was. Identity. Jesus humbled himself and became a servant. Jesus died not only in the flesh, he died to the flesh. Jesus became obedient. Jesus submitted his thoughts and emotions to the will of God. Jesus loved without fail. Jesus responded and never reacted. Y'all know the difference? The response is what I control. A reaction is who controls me. <laughs> Jesus sought to honor the Father in everything. I'll tell your neighbor, he calls him for real. Okay. For real, I promise. You got my back up, Kathy? You got me? Amen. Amen. Right, Y'all give me five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. I'm, I'll just tell y'all this. Five minutes and I'm down. I'm done. We're going to have communion. And we're going to turn in and do what we got to do. So, like Jesus, the Bible says, let this what be in you. Uh-huh. I want to tell y'all, this is good. Because when the mind get right, the heart get right. I ain't talking about the blood pump. I'm talking about your emotional center. Your will. Your go-to. The subconscious of you. When your mind get right, so does your heart. And vice versa. When your heart gets right, your mind follows. Tell us about I'm a work in progress. And I'm in process. So just like Jesus, we got to know who we are. One of the reasons why many of our young folk are experimenting sexually because they have not been told who they are. Daddy, tell your daughter who she is. So she can expect to hear who she is from the man that really loves her. Young ladies are calling each other bees. I ain't going to say the word. Don't get scared. I know they're cussing preachers, but this pulpit is not a cussing pulpit. But they call themselves bee before them. They call themselves sister girl. Where are all my bees? God have mercy. Identity crisis. Young men acting effeminate. You got to know who you are, man. You got to know who you are. Enough men ain't speaking into our sons. Son, what's wrong with you? You are not a woman. Y'all, uh, Bishop, you anti-gay. No, I'm anti-devil. Let me say this and move on. You cannot fulfill your purpose not being who God called you to be. A substitute will not fulfill your purpose. I know AI is getting popular, and I'm not against AI. I think more believers ought to get out front so we can control it. AI can be evil if we don't get out front and control it. They used to call the television a one-eyed monster. Now we don't call it that no more. Because most of us want to be on what? Oh, come on now, come on now. Idiot box, yeah, there you go. That's what I forgot about. But we got to be like Jesus. We got to know who we are. You cannot fulfill destiny being anything but who you are. Like Jesus, I'm hurrying along now. Three minutes. We must humble ourselves and become a servant. We ought to look for opportunities to serve. Whether somebody acknowledges me or not, I serve. I get my gold star knowing that I serve. Number three, I got to die to my flesh. Sometimes you got to tell the flesh, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't saying that. I'm not acting like that. You will not rule today. How many can testify? There were days flesh won. There were days flesh won big. But the power of God helps you reduce the winds of the flesh. Somebody say, die to the flesh. Like Jesus did. Become obedient. Even to the death of the cross, he became obedient. I'm telling you, you don't go to the cross no more. 
Jesus did it to tell us that. But you never lose obeying God. Then you need to submit your thoughts and emotions to the will of God. Lord, what will you have me do? I like that WWJZ, what would Jesus do? We ought to add WWJS, what would Jesus say? WWJT, what would Jesus think? If y'all see that on the t-shirt, don't get mad. You might do it before me. I ain't going to be mad at you. But what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus think? That ought to be our pause moment. We have to love without fail. Our love is not for sale, but my love is without fail. Beatles said it, can't buy me love. Don't y'all act like you never heard that song. <laughs> Very old. I'm telling my age. You got the love without fail. One minute left. You got to respond and not react. Don't let nobody take you anywhere you don't want to go. I got little things I do. I clear my throat. I pull my ear. I rub my nose to bring me into sanity. What's this message? Sanity in an insane world. Before I kirk out. Y'all still saying that? Before I lose it. I want to pause for peace. And I want to respond and not react. Last but not least, I want to seek to honor the Father in everything. Y'all get something out of this today. Y'all mind standing with me? Somebody heard the word today. And somebody is saying, Lord, I'm available. Somebody is saying, Lord, I want you to be the head of my life and the head of my thoughts. I want to be available to you so that you can use me like you want, so you can bless me like you desire, so you can help me to be all you've called me to be. As your eyes are closed and your heads are raised, I want you to begin to tell God I'm available for you to work on my heart, work on my head, Lord God, it's not going to just happen all at once. I may have been saved for 20 years, 50 years. I still need you to work on my heart and work on my head. Here's the altar call right here and right now. Somebody in here will just be honest with God and say, Lord, I know you're not done with me yet. Keep working, Lord. Keep working, Lord. And let me not accept the devil's temptation to quit on you. Help me to not give the devil place to give the enemy license to take me where I shouldn't go Lord I'm in an insane world I need you to help me with my mind and with my heart so I want y'all to pray this prayer with me Father come on say it like you mean it Father I realize that you are the best thing that could ever happen to me that your love is without fail and your grace is without limit. Father, you brought me this far. You've kept me through danger seen and unseen. Now I declare I'm submitted to you. Work on my heart. Fix it. Where it's broken. Mend it. Where it's off-centered. Center it and help me, Lord, to have the heart of Jesus. Work on my head. Make my head right. Lord, so that I can think like you. Respond like you. Act like you. For as I think, so am I. Lord, I submit myself. I can't do this alone. I need the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Help me, fill me, empower me to think like Jesus, to speak like Jesus, to have a heart like Jesus. I lift my hands to you and I receive your power 
to go forward and not look back. Now I challenge you to praise God right now on that. He's hearing your prayer. He's answering prayer. He's doing what only he can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm available to you, Lord. Even in my sleeping hours, Lord, speak it to my heart. Speak it to my spirit. I'm available. I'm available. Anything like me, this was the old saints used to say. Anything in me that shouldn't be, take it out. Straighten me. Anybody ever heard the old saints say that? I want to be saved. I want to be right. And I want to be whole. Turn the light of heaven on my soul. Lord, I ain't going to waste time looking at everybody else. I got needs from you today. The main need as we prepare to have communion, if you don't know Jesus as Lord of your life, can I introduce you to? See, I can introduce you because I know him. Anybody know him in here? That's really what evangelism is, introducing folk to who I know. <laughs> I'm introducing you to Jesus. I want to do that today. I'm assuming everybody here is saved and has given their life to the Lord. But in case they're not, the altar's open. I don't care what time we got to do, we got to do. They're waiting for us. But I just need somebody who don't know the Lord to give them their minds, their hearts, their lives. Here at Light Builders, we talk about it all the time. Three alphabets. A, admit you need them. Simple. You can't get nowhere without admitting. B, you got to believe in the Lord and accept him as the only Savior. There are no other Saviors. Jesus died for you. Then C, you must commit to follow him. Again, it's a process you need to get in the church that preaches the gospel, teaches the word. Fellowship of the saints, because iron does what? Sharpens iron. So we want to be in that place, whether online or in person. I'm thanking God for saving somebody today. Can y'all praise God with me? I believe in God. He's been, he's been saving people. We want to be available be filled with the Holy Ghost. Pastor Al, if you get the communion, you and the, amen, Elder Kathy, if y'all don't mind, Deacon Vince, if you want to come, amen, just hand it to them. We're going to let the power couple help us today. Amen. You can remain standing if you wish. You can be seated. We want to give you communion. Amen. We want to all hold it so we can all take it at once. Give it to them here. Thank God for you. Amen. 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 Jesus is the bread of life. He was sent down from glory. Pass out your journey. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He is the great I am, source of our supply, God of heaven and earth. Brother Lavina and Brother Allen, y'all can help me collect this remains when we're done. Amen. Brother Ryan, if you can give them that top, then they can use that. Amen. With the cross on it. Tell the Levine and Brother Ronnie. Have everyone been served?
everyone been served? Beloved, I want you to take this sacrament in your hands. The first part of it is the bread. It's not the real Jesus, but it represents him. Jesus gave his body to sacrifice. He gave his life to pay for us, to give us freedom, to help us to walk in newness. Again, I declare this is not the body of Jesus, but it represents his body. I want you to take it now in obedience to the word of the Lord. He said, I want you to eat this. It represents my body, which will be broken for you. He took on himself our sin. He became sin. Let's take now this wafer, which represents the body of our Lord Jesus. Let's eat it all together. The broken body of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us take the cup now. This is grape juice. This is not the real blood of Jesus. But it represents the blood of Jesus. Let this blood... This representation do something for us and in us so that as we receive it, we walk in it today under the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I will not drink nor eat this with you until I do it again in my kingdom. Today, he said, as often as you do this, this do in remembrance of me. Let's take now the broken body and the blood. Let's drink ye all of it together. Thank God. Thank God for the blood. You may be seated with the praise on your lips and joy in your heart. We're going to collect your remains and, and God is going to be glorified. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 How many say he's a living word? He's the blood of Jesus, giver of life, and he is the great I am. Amen. Amen. Sister Indy, our doorkeeper is going to pass out with Brother Ronnie. Thank you, sir. Amen. You need to tie the offering envelope, lift your hands. Amen. Online, our structure is about to be given. We're going to be a blessing in giving. I want to declare that Light Builders Church, as we give, we are a generous church. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. We are a generous church. Light Builders Church has generous and faithful tithers and givers. Your generosity and generous giving adds value to this ministry. So now is your opportunity to continue your generosity in giving. You're giving not out of compulsion. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, prompt to do it, ready at all times to obey God in giving. So I just want you to, as you've already prayed and prepared your seat, let's prepare to deposit it. Let's prepare to give it. Amen. We're going to pass the basket to you today. Since Brother Ronnie's already on his feet, I'm going to let him be doing the work. Amen. So you won't trip over the wires. Ronnie, you don't mind. You're getting your, you're getting your steps in today. Amen. Not that you don't get them in. <laughs> if you're giving online electronically, our instructions will be up there. Amen for you. And we'll bless you in our giving. Amen.
Ronnie, we're going to pass the basket today. We're going to let you pass it. <laughs> Amen. That's why I say you get in your step, sir. Amen. Amen. I want to put up the electronic giving. Those that need that, we, we may, may have some guests that don't know. Man, all of these work very well. God has protected and has made us ready for our blessing and our miracle. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. So faithful. Amen. You all know that because we're generous, God is generous to us. Can I get a witness? Because we help others, God helps us. God meets our needs. Amen. Real quick, by way of announcement, Brother Gary, amen, and our chronicler, we just want to remind everybody about our regular weekly announcements every day, 365, 24, my God, and hours are in a day, but we spend a portion of that in prayer every day for you. Every day, 6.15 a.m. to 6.30 a.m., our prayer warriors are praying for you, the needs of our church. They're praying for our plans for next year, amen, for 2024. They're praying for all of our endeavors to finish out the year strong because we are a church that wants to honor God. Can I get a witness? So every morning, 6.15 a.m. to 6.30. And Wednesdays, corporate prayer, 6 p.m., same number. Same number. You would dial, amen, you would dial our number for prayer. And uh, you can get in there with the passcode, Brother Gary. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'll try to remember the number. 605-475-4700. 605-475-4700. I remember it. And then you would dial the code 585-263. Pound sign. Amen. That will let you in the group. Amen. Be in prayer with us even this month of December. We're already on the third day, and our focus today is continuing to be, amen, participation in the work of the ministry and walking in the things of God. According to Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. Partners, you know every morning around 7 or 8, I'm sending you the focus so you have it, amen. And in the sense I'm going to try to make sure I finish it so by tomorrow you'll have the rest of the month so y'all will be right in front of that, amen. So... I'll make sure y'all have that. But God is so faithful. Every day, amen, we're praying again. All right. Also, our impact groups. We're back with our impact groups. Amen. Meeting, you have our code, amen, and how to get into our impact groups. Our one-touch code along with our passcode. You have that to be able to get in. Man, our impact groups have been powerful. Great discussion, great lessons. Amen. And we're continuing on in our impact groups, talking about evangelism. Last week, we talked about, amen, the urgency of the moment. What's the cause? Amen. Amen. A cause for concern. I'm trying to read your lips. I missed it. Amen. Thank you. A cause. We ought to be concerned about souls, everybody. And we ought to be reaching people for Jesus. So that's what we're talking about this week. Amen. We're going to another subject, still talking about concern. Still talking about what does it mean to be too late. I wanted to really give you the shock that some of our relatives will find out too late that Jesus saves. That ought to scare you. Some of your friends who you huck huck with, slap the back with, will find out too late that Jesus saves. Don't let that be the case. You must tell somebody. Look at the name and say, that's my responsibility. Okay, you ain't responsible to save them. You're responsible to tell them. Right? And don't walk away arguing. Well, I told you. You can go to hell if you want. No. If they don't accept at that point, <laughs> don't be telling nobody go to hell. <laughs> they may not take that right. Amen? But what you want to do is, if they don't accept it, then pray that God send somebody to water after somebody has planted, and God give the increase. Amen? But let's do our part. Look at the neighbor and say, let's do our part. Amen. We want to be mindful of, again, our consecration and our other announcements. Amen. And then leaders, as we ask you next Saturday at 10, we'll be with you. 
Remember, we sent out a notice about that. Amen. So looking forward to that. Any other announcements? Amen. Don't forget we're fasting and praying. We're not asking you to skip meals. We're just asking you to do the Daniel fast. So you're like, I can't skip a meal. Well, eat some vegetables, eat some fruit. You're going to be okay. But just 21 years praying about the schedule, praying about the vision, praying about what we are planning to do for next year. Every great move of God is preceded by prayer. And we want everything we do to succeed. Amen? Amen. So let's keep that in mind. Again, somebody sent you out a nice video. If you have not watched it yet, to get what we're trying to do for next year, every partner should have that link. Watch it. It's, less, it's about 40 minutes at the most with the teaching and the plans for next year. Make sure you watch it. Make sure you grab it. Embrace it. Digest it so you know what we're praying about these next 21 days. All right? All hearts and minds clear. Let's stand together. God bless you. Don't forget to link with us on social media at Instagram at LBC Ministry, Maryland, MD. My God, Twitter at Light Builders Chur. C-H-U-R. Couldn't fit the church in there. Just Chur. Amen to God. Amen. And also YouTube, Light Builders Church. We have a page. Amen. You can get the replay of this partner's message, this powerful word today, and not be left behind. Look at somebody say, it was great worshiping with you today. Amen. I got to get out of here. Thank you, brothers, for helping to put the chairs back. We got to get ready to go baptize these souls. I'm excited about that. Amen. I'm very excited about people going down in the water in Jesus' name, rising to walk in the newness of life. So I'm excited. Amen. Let's lift up our hands and say, Lord, I don't only receive a blessing. I give the blessing. Let my people, my family, my Light Builders Church family, everybody I'm connected with, be blessed abundantly. And I thank you. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us all. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. I declare this and I say to everybody, God dwells in the midst of Light Builders Church. God dwells in the midst of a blessed community. Beloved, love you all the life. Grace and peace be unto you. Hug somebody, tell them God is sure enough good.